Hey everybody and welcome to The Void, a show dedicated to filling the void between being an employee and becoming self-employed. Most people refer to starting your own company as taking the leap, as if they're blindly jumping off a cliff and into the unknown. This show is here to help you understand that it doesn't have to be that way. As always, if you like what you're hearing on the show, please do us a favor and help share the void with somebody else who might be wanting to start their own company. We saw an opportunity to help others understand that self-employment is well within your reach, and just as our businesses have grown organically and by word of mouth, we want this show to grow the same way. So if you see somebody asking questions about starting their own service-based business, please do us a favor and send them a link to the show. I'm your host, Mitch Smedley, and with me as always is David Hilton. We'll see for how much longer. We'll see for how much longer. <laughs> Dave's, Dave's considering putting in his two weeks. Because I he, don't have to put in two weeks. He, he's, a volunteer. <laughs> he's a professional volunteer. Yeah, what? <laughs> I'm not getting fucking paid. <laughs> He's the guy quit trip, the old guy quit trip that like talks to all employees. Dave like, hey, just yeah. coming in. When there's when I qu- if I quit this show, the like it'll be Blaze like, of Glory. It'll be the best video we've ever put out. <laughs> like he it'll just, just be and never stop recording. Yeah, just never stop recording. Isn't <laughs> Even that what if they I say? have two black eyes, never stop recording. This desk is gonna be flipped over. <laughs> Mitch has been wearing on me. He's uh, like, I'll tell you topic David, three when we get there, and then fuck. topic three, you know, like, okay, Dave, and he just gets some blocks. <laughs> That's a topic. Here's D- your topic, bitch. Dave just got to pull the ultimate "I told you so" on me before the show, and he's just I don't like it. it. No, I don't like it. Well, you don't like it, but you're because still if you loving... just listen to me, I wouldn't have to tell you I told you so. I'd rather you just listen. Yeah. Like I know Dave and I aren't experts, but we're like I could I can feel Dave's pain. He's Austin's, like, I told you. I'm never an expert. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> just play one on TV. I play one on YouTube. I'm playing. Oh an my god. All right, I'm over it. Yeah. Uh, I'm over it. Uh, what's going on in the world? Dude, uh, did you see uh, I, I just heard this today. I don't know if it was today or yesterday or the day before, but um, like that IRS whistleblower came out and was like, "Hey, like Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, their family got ten million dollars, and it came from China, and like we have to investigate it. Like they've been investigating for a little while. Well, today it came out that uh, the Department of Justice like pulled all of those people off that job. Like they just said, "Nope, you're not investigating that anymore." Yeah, I saw like the FBI, right? Or maybe it was the FBI came in and said, I, I, I don't remember, but I was like, what? Yeah. How do you, like, how are you being investigated for, like, I don't yeah. even know what you would call that, embezzlement, the fraud. News, the news blip I heard. Tyranny. Or maybe it was even, on. I can't remember where I was hearing they it. They just pulled them off. I was like, what the, f- they what? Were, they were liking it to the JFK days. Like, JFK was kind of big on the FBI is corrupt in like controlled by the government yeah and, and not like honest yeah and and that that's this i don't know i can't remember where i was hearing it from but they were they were liking it to that yeah. i was like this well, is like back in the jfk days yeah like the department of justice is literally like okay mr biden we'll do whatever you want sir yeah like we'll just like what you know what i don't understand is how do people not hear that stuff and be like ooh, yeah maybe i that's we not a good look be, be voting for those people right like it's i never thought like i thought the deep state and all that was a bunch of bullshit like i thought oh that's just conspiracy theory crap i think it's real i mean there's like there's got to be an element of truth to it there's gotta be yeah and it's like dude what i'll say this what there's either an element of truth but it's it's not as bad as they make it out to be or it's way worse. I think it's way worse. <laughs> like, it's got to be fucking way worse. And it's scary. Like, for them to just be like, okay, th- nope, it, we're just, that's yep. going away. Nope, done. Literally, you took $10 million from China, put it in your pocket as a quid pro quo. Yeah. And then now we're just like, well, it's just, well, that's, mm-hmm. it's politics. That's just, yeah. you know, that's what, what? And if it's what? true, what's that say? That they own our ass. That's a, exactly. <laughs> they, they they own our ass. Yeah. They're already letting them buy property over here, which let's be honest. I you know they say oh China's buying this property and they're doing this and they're doing that and blah blah. Like if we ever went to war with China, we'd just be like oh hey this is ours, um, this is that's, ours now. That's ours. We're not. Yeah. yeah. You can't have that. We're taking this by eminent domain. Yeah. Basically, like we're just this is ours. So it it doesn't really worry me. Like if they were starting to put up 
like structures <laughs> and like you know, yeah, like a military. Ba- I, like I'd be worried about it, but no, they're just making money on our stupidity. You know, increase of land prices is all they're doing. Yeah, well, like I know stuff has to be happening because it's just human nature. Like if you have a friend that works at a restaurant and you know them, you're like, hey, can you sell me something for free? Like it happens there, and like. What it's basically just happens on a higher level, just and there's a lot more money that's involved. You know? Yeah, the oh, problem yeah. is it's taxpayer money. Yeah, like mm. that's the problem. They're like, well, it's just China. They're get we. That means we got their money. Yeah, but then it dictated what we did with our money. And does it does it mean we got their money? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, it's just it makes me that shit makes me nervous. Yeah, like I'm not a super conspiracy nut, but that shit ain't right. Right. Like, somebody's got to be doing it. And then did you see that other thing that came out about Trump? Mm-mm. Like, I guess, um, I want to say it was the Durham report, but that's not right, because I think that's Zach's last name. Um, but anyways, this guy has been investigating since, like, 2019 of whether there was actual collusion between Trump and Russia. And instead of the FBI going through their, like, the things they were supposed to before they started an investigation, they were just like, nope, yep. we're doing it right now. And this report's come out and said, um, there was no, like, there should have been no investigation. Yeah. That shit should have just been like, look, this isn't happening. And it's all, and all, and you know what's going to happen. Nothing. Yeah. Like, you tried to wriggle an election. It didn't work. But still, like, what? Yeah. What kind of corruption is that? That was on the moniker on the TV at Planet Fitness this morning. Were you doing cardio? God, no. (laughs) God, no. Dude, Mitch, do cardio. As I'm walking in. Do, do, uh, do cardio just, so you can get the news. No, do no, cardio so you can be in shape. Oh. So He's doing it, the weightlifting. Just as I'm walking way. in, I happen to look up and see it. and They got you. I, yeah, I think it said something about uh, you know, stopping the FBI, stopping the probe into Russian collusion or something like that. Well, literally, like Hillary Clinton's campaign, they were like, okay, look, we're going to try to pin or link Trump and Russia oh, yeah. so that you know, it looks bad. Yeah. And this, so they called up the FBI. This is like the short version. And was like, Hey, you have to investigate this. And instead of them like actual doing any investigating before they started yeah. an investigation, like, do we have a reason to investigate. They other were than like Hillary saying, do it. No, they were like, Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. We'll yep. do whatever you want. And I'm thinking. All right. So you've newly started your company and you're trying to pinch pennies. However, you don't realize the biggest thing that's hurting you right now is not gathering all of your information into one spot and making it super efficient for you to use. So the answer is Field Pulse. It gets you off of paper tickets. It gets you off of all of that crazy office work at the end of the day and reconciling all that stuff. And it lets you organize everything with ease. It puts it all into the computer. It actually puts it all into the cloud. So it's not even putting it on your computer. And it lets you organize your customers. It lets you organize all of your service calls. Heck, it'll even route you to your service call. And the best part is, even after all of that, you'll probably realize about a 100% growth in your business just in the first year of using Field Pulse. So if you'd like to check out Field Pulse and see what great looks like, click on the link in the description of this show. What is... What? What? And like, with the, what? And with yeah. the stuff coming out, you wonder like if they, if the Democrats are thinking that Trump isn't a threat anymore. So like, okay, we can die, we can die down on the, on the Russia thing and this thing. And so it makes you wonder if they are sort of writing him off. I can't, I, I can't figure out what's going on. So they had that town hall. Mm-hmm. Like Trump went on CNN, like yeah. his greatest enemy, right? And yep. so he crushed it. It made them look like com- that bitch looked like a complete idiot, yep. right? And I kept thinking. Why would they do this? Why would they do this? Why would they do this? And then it makes sense to me. They want him to run because they know he can't win. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're trying to bait him into running. Totally. Yeah. Well, yep. and he's running. But and the other thing is CNN, like they their ratings have been in the tank, right? Well, they had that him on there and now, and they were like through the roof. Mm. Oh, they yeah. made all this money. And yeah. at the same time, like Arch Nemesis, let's yeah, put him on it's, there. It's so dumb. Well, it's and like, people so, can't yeah. see through that shit. Have they're you, just as dumb. Have you seen the and I don't know where it was. Again, I was hearing this secondhand. There was some kind of town hall where I think it was CNN was interviewing a crowd of supposed Trump supporters. Well, it was the crowd in the town hall. Okay. Yeah. And and they were asking, like, they were they were leading these people into, like, we already know Trump's lied a whole bunch and all this stuff. And so they're, they're, they're throwing out a statement and trying to pass it off as fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And, yeah. and they're trying to make these people agree with the statement, and it's not happening, right? But then they were like, why did Trump spend the whole conversation talking about the 2020 elections? Like, shouldn't he be worried about 2024? And, and they, literally the first person they asked said, the first question you asked Trump was about the 2020 election. Yeah. Did you want him to not answer it and talk 2024? Or did you want him to answer the question? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, how about instead of asking why Trump's talking about 2020, how about we ask why the media is talking about 2020 still? Well, and that's the whole deal. Like, and they got all those people there. So they knew that they were Republicans because they told them and told Trump, or I don't think they told Trump, but they told them, hey, we're going to be asking him questions based on the Republican primary that's coming up. Yeah. Like, and then all they did was ask shit that old was news. old stuff. Yeah. And then all the crowd was like, yeah, fuck them. You know, <laughs> like we love Trump, you know? And it was like, did you not see that coming? That's bad. I think they did see it coming they're, and they're doing it on purpose. Well, that's the media, it's just making the media look like shit. That's all well, it's doing. It's like, I don't think they care as long as they're making money. It's a win-win for well, them yeah. because like, they can get the press off of him like running. And then, so basically if he makes it, it's like four more years of good press then or Good press for them. Well, yeah, they they roll in the dough yeah. whenever he's in office. Yeah, or even if they're, he's, they're probably hurting right now with Biden in office because they're <laughs> still having to talk about three three year old shit. I just, I don't get it. They're running out of content. So. so dumb, so dumb. All right, I've had enough of that. You know, between coming in here and let's talk about real shit, being pissed, and then now <laughs> I got to talk about Trump. I'm all fired. Up. Fuck all this. <laughs> Let's talk about real shit. Okay, what do you want to talk about? I got an excavator so stuck today, I had to call a tow truck to get me out. What kind of excavator? Uh, backhoe, like full on backhoe. What Extend brand? Out. Cat. Uh, of course, it's a cat. Yeah, it, they suck ass. Let's let's be fair. This any excavator would have gotten stuck here. I'm digging a water line across a creek. You know what I have noticed is you're not smart. Like it rained. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, you literally. Know what I have noticed you're not smart. <laughs> Sunday night it rained half an inch, and in some areas got an inch and a half. Yeah. And then you're like, you know what we should do? We should, we should totally. Get a, we should get a backhoe. And we should try to dig dig across a creek. We should dig a yeah. Oh, like, I did it. You like don't even how? Work. Like, <laughs> yeah, I did it. If I showed up to the job, and you're like, hey, we're doing this today, and it's been pouring rain for three days, you get the finger in my back because I'm walking away. We've like, been, what are you doing, dude? I think we've been on the job a day and a half. We've got about three, no, probably closer to 400 feet of water line installed. That's it? Well, across a creek. Hey, wait for it to be dry. I don't know what to and, say. And, and had to wait on a record to come pull me up the hill out of the creek. How much that cost you? Only 250 bucks. That's cheap. So, like, it was either that or pay for a directional driller to come in and drill it under the creek. I probably would have done that. And I'm like, this creek's pretty dry, and there's a lot of shale down there, and... Like, last thing I want to do is pay a directional driller to come in and then be like, oh, I can't drill it. If it's directional drill, they can drill rock. I know. They'll but drill right through can that Can you bitch. imagine what that would cost? Oh, yeah, it'd have been five grand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I bet we can do it. And so we dug up to the creek yesterday. Did you call today, DNR and ask them if you had permission to cross that creek? No. You didn't call the Corps or anything God, like that? no. <laughs> Why would I do that? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I mean, I'm just asking. Probably not even permit in the job. I don't know. Did you get your, your, <laughs> did you get permit? Your What's a permit? Yeah. Did you Never get your mother-in-law's it. approval? Her, Bru yeah. Whatever. Oh, God, no. <laughs> you get her approval. Got to get a picture you're cleared of all the laws and yeah. the lawsuits. No, we, uh, like, I, I knew it was a risk that the uh, excavator was not going to come out of the creek very well. I don't know what your dog's doing I, over here. I don't know. He's got FOMO bad lately. I see. Uh, okay. Yeah. Go on. So you get uh, this so stuck in the creek. I got it down in there fine. It, it's got a long flat bottom, like 20 foot along the bottom. And I was troughing through all the sludge, pushing itself along, but it would not push itself up the hill. It just wouldn't. It didn't have the ass to push itself and drive at the same time up the hill. So brought yeah. in a wrecker. They put some tension on the cable. And between that and me and first... And then pushing on the boom, we were able to climb up out of the hill. And then the wrecker even stayed there. I was um, like, I'll stay here until you finish the creek. <laughs> well, no, pulled me up five feet, let me dig another set. Pulled me up another five to seven feet and let me dig another set. And then pulled me up a third time and let me dig the final set. Now I was up on dry ground, so it didn't matter. So Must have been a slow day. Yeah, I guess. So <laughs> what's funny is the guy that owns a wrecking company is the guy that lives in the murder house in Grand Valley. 
Yeah. Oh, aren't you friends with that guy? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I called him up. I'm like, that's hey, what why you, it was only two fifty. What, what Let's be doing? honest. No, he doesn't cut me any deals because I don't cut him any deals. He was even bitching at me about price the other day. So, <laughs> I mean, rightfully so. But should have charged your ass more than two fifty. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, he listens to the show. Charge Maybe. more. Yeah, charge more. Charge more. So, all right, go on. So that's it. Uh, all right, we got three topics today. Topic one: Your turn to pop, like popcorn. <laughs> Topic two: Don't be a little bitch. And topic three, how many days do you have left? Oh, man. Okay. Sounds right. good. You- <laughs> so topic one, this was inspired by Austin. And it talks about how we like to compare ourselves to the level of success of others when they may have just been putting in the work for a long enough time and they popped, right? So uh, you'll see this on YouTube. You'll see this with country music stars or really any music stars uh, where, you know, a whole bunch of people are putting in the work and they're all pretty much doing the right things. And then somebody pops off and somebody else doesn't. And there's not a lot of reason. There's not a lot of logic as to why one popped off and one didn't. Maybe somebody just got a little bit of a lucky break. And uh, a lot of times we find ourselves comparing ourselves to the ones that are popping off. And we're, we're overanalyzing it. We're overthinking it. We're thinking, oh, they, they're smarter than me. They're playing 4D chess or they're, they're thinking on a whole different dimension or you know, they've got their you know, whatever. And realistically, it might just be their turn to pop. It could, it could be that they put in a ton of hard work that you didn't see too. Could be. Like they could have been working for five years super hard. Totally And could then be. finally it was like it hit. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it could be that is. I would say most of the time that is what's happened. I was I was listening to an interview with a country music singer, and I for the life of me I cannot remember the singer. They're not wildly famous, but they're emerging, and they've been a country music singer for like eighteen years. Well, and that's how music usually is. Like yeah. if you like if you are watching Pandora, and then you're like, oh, a song comes on, so you bring up the screen, and it gives like a little blurb at the bottom about them whatever and then it says on there been playing together since 1997 yeah and it's 2018 and you're like holy shit yeah well it's because they literally have been running the road for 20 years and then they finally had a hit and it took off and that's what this guy was saying he was like dude this is like this number one hits not even our best song like we have some banger stuff from 10 years ago it's just that we weren't popular enough for people to see it and and yeah. you get one to take off, and then people start looking into you more, and then all of a sudden they gravitate towards another one, and then people start looking into you more, and next thing you know, you got four or five songs that everybody loves. Yeah. And hell, half the songs were from four or five years ago. Yeah. And they start listening to that first album. They're like, "How did we not know about them?" Well, and then he flat called it out. He was like, "Because the music you... industry fucking sucks." Well, and, <laughs> and he flat called it out, and he said, "Once you pop." He's like, you can write trash, but you have such a big following that nobody cares, and they start loving your trash. Yeah, that's so. I, so I didn't know we were going to talk about the music industry, but that that drives me insane. Yeah, like literally, you know, like there was a thing I saw one time. Katy Perry had a song out, and it was garbage. Like, wasn't one of her hits. But they had spent like eight million dollars. Twenty eight people had written it, and it was just like. This this shouldn't even be making it to radio play, right? But because of her because other song, yeah, it, and and they were like, okay, she's going to be a sex symbol, and we're going to pour money into it and, until it makes money. Yeah, it's not like it was in the '60s and the '70s where it was like, oh shit, that's good. That band takes off. Yeah. It's not that way anymore. Right. Literally, you got to be lucky or know somebody or be a family member of someone in the industry. Like we used to go play shows all the time. And you like a band would come up before us or after us or whatever, and you'd be listening. And you're like, these guys are insanely good. Like they're awesome. Yeah. Never heard of them. They never did anything. Yeah. You'd see them at other shows. They never did anything. Well, it's because they're just, you know, mm-hmm. no blow, nobodies with no money and no publicity and no anything. Got to put out a sex tape, man. You know, <laughs> you got to do something. <laughs> you got to pull a Mitch Smedley. Oh I man, mean, I just broke my pen. That's what you get for saying sex tape on the radio. <laughs> Like on I, the radio. Uh, uh, yeah, we're not on the radio. But it's like, you know, you just, you can't get out there, and it just, it makes the industry worse. Like, you know? Yeah. It just, you don't get to hear the best music. You just don't. Right. That's what sucks. Well, and, and the, the key thing to remember, too, is 
is it's like popcorn, right? You put all those kernels in the microwave, and ninety percent of them pop, but none of them pop at the exact same time, right? They're essentially the same kernel. What about the ten percent that don't pop? I don't know. They're just duds. <laughs> They're oppressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're oppressed. Yeah. Uh, but like ninety percent of them pop, but some pop in thirty seconds, some pop at forty-five seconds, some pop at the full two minutes. Or how, I don't know how long you put popcorn in the microwave for. Yeah. But like <laughs> some people just take longer to, to pop off and and it just kind of depends. So Well, and the, and the moral is really don't be obsessed or quit or go over the top crazy because it you're still working hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the I think the moral is focus on the inputs and not on the outputs, right? Like especially if you're new – or even if you're not new, but you haven't made it yet, focus on what you're doing to, to the inputs. Focus on the effort you're putting in. Focus on the results you're putting in. And then the output will come eventually. The net results. The from payoff. The, the, yeah, payoff. the payoff will payoff. come eventually. Right, right. But you've got to... And, you know, business is a little different. Like you see those rewards sooner. Yes. You know, obviously, yep. you, you see what's happening, but it's the same thing, too. Right. You know, it's just like, um, it's just like you. I'll use you as an example. Like, Mitch started his company. I had no, like, we had talked about it before, but then he did it, and he's rolling on, rolling on, and I haven't, don't talk to him for a while, and then all of a sudden, I see him, and I'm like, so, hey, how's it going? Oh, I'm getting ready to hire my second guy. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, did you just get a loan and then just take... No, I've been doing it for like eight months. I've been killing it just by myself. <laughs> Saving my ass off and yeah. paying myself little. Yeah. Well, I didn't see that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't see what the other guys have yeah. been laboring towards, and then all of a sudden they're big, and you're like, oh, they got lucky. They're big. They're just, I'm not ever going to be that. You that's, you could be that big. Yeah. You just got to work there to get there, too. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's one of the benefits of cheering other people's success on as well. It puts you in the right mindset. Um, because I mean, you could have friends that pop off and you know exactly how hard they're working. Right. And you might even be working harder than they are, but they had that one conversation with the one person that put them in the right room at the right time and made the right connection and boom, now they're, now they're where they are. Yeah. So it, it just kind of depends. I think like the nuance I was trying to make about it is for people not to overanalyze or think there's some master plan or like formula because like there's a lot of times where it's not even a matter of essentially popping off. It's just a matter of like people who are successful and they're just trying things. Yeah. And it's like, I remember watching a behind the scenes of one of my favorite directors and they were kind of all talking. and he's like, well, we'll just do it and see what we see. And you're seeing that and you're like, it makes you realize that like the greats, people who are like Titans in the industry, it's like, it's, you know, they're, they're great. And this is not knocking him, but it's like, they're still they're trying stuff and yeah. you know it's you dude know. it's it's no different than that waterline install we're doing today mm-hmm. right like let's just try to run the backhoe across the creek and see what happens worst mm-hmm. case scenario i got to call in a fucking tow truck and get pulled out of here and lo and behold we got it in i did have to call in a tow truck but still ended up cheaper than the alternative so mm-hmm. yeah like a lot of it is just trying shit out and you'll you'll have that guy in high school who like he'll he'll try something out the worst thing you could do is if you're this person to be like, oh yeah, I, I had that planned out. I, I meant to do that, and it's just yeah. like, no, that's the worst Never. thing you could do. <laughs> that's not even in high school. That's all the time. You, get, you got guys that <laughs> that's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I totally meant to do that. Yeah, I meant to go through six accounting firms. <laughs> you know, are you? Is that a poke at me? <laughs> no. Damn. <laughs> I don't know why you're looking at me. I didn't kick you in the sack. <laughs> that really was. I'm sorry, but I just like when I went to like wow, I went to go on it, and the first thing in my mouth was accounting. Yeah. Well, I mean, that kind of applies too, because somebody mean, could be like, "Oh, well, it's like Mitch has got to figure it out," and you're like, "No, I've just gone through two I've, accounting firms shit, to figure had, it out." I've I, told you ten times we can do his job. <laughs> like, if you want to get rid of him, I, I understand. Sorry, Mitch, I, mean, I was being it like in that I, way. No, I mean, it's not. I can reach over, and hit record. I mean, I, it's not fucking hard. I had a uh, forty-five minute phone call over lunch today with my financial strategist. Mm. And dude, if you need a financial strategist or and or bookkeeper, just ask me. I'll no, do it. No, this is. Different. I mean, if you just want me to do it, I will. So you know, he's talking about <laughs> about levels and shit, and I have to like bring him down. I'm like, dude, 
I know you and I are the same age, but you're a whole lot fucking smarter than I am. And half the shit you just said, I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. I need you to break it down and tell me in layman's terms what you need from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need you to talk to me like I'm a complete dipshit, please. You, well, yeah. Like, can you like, just... He, he literally <laughs> said, he says, I need you to have a hundred grand liquid right now. Mm hmm Okay. I can't. I bought too many damn trucks. <laughs> I bought a new lightning yeah. and I can't fucking do it. I don't know what you want from me. And like where the supplies is someone could look at Mitch and be like, oh, like he's got the accounting and marketing figured out, but they don't know behind the scenes of like, you've gone through several They don't companies. know behind the scenes. I just fired my marketing yeah. agency and I'm on my third accountant. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> that just goes to show you is like, you know, a bad actor would be like, yeah, that was my intention. I, I planned to go through <laughs> several companies. Seriously. If, nope. you, if you need help. I offer consulting services if you just need me to come sit mm. at your office for a while right. and help you. Yeah, that's what I meant, Mitch. Don't make that face. <laughs> I came off totally in a bad way when I first brought it up. <laughs> Mitch looked at me and I was like, I didn't mean oh, for it to come out like that. Foot in mouth. I foot mean, in mouth. I didn't mean for it to come out like Brum. that. <laughs> but I'm pumped. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Moving on. Topic two is don't be a little bitch. Where this spent <laughs> spawns from. He looks from. right at me. <laughs> what? <laughs> What I didn't <laughs> so so where this stems from? Um, Just laughing. I don't know. The uh, uh, for those that follow me on social media, if you follow me on Facebook, you saw a video that I posted uh, a couple of days ago or last week. By the time you're listening to this, it would have been last week, about a week ago. And uh, it was for a contest called the Closer Contest, where you would get to speak on stage at Million Dollar Mastermind. And Austin and I did a bang up job on the video. Um, I was in front of the camera. Austin was behind the camera. Austin was kind of directing the whole thing. Um, like the video is pretty great. It's real. It's authentic. And Austin does a really good job of pulling a lot of emotion out of me. And so the video was probably one of the most viewed videos in the closer contest. I don't want to say probably, I think it actually was the most viewed video in the contest. Um, and so I thought I really had a good shot at winning. And uh, turns out I didn't win. And then I got to looking at the guy that won and his video and like kind of the setup and everything else. And there was a, about a 24 hour period where I was being a little bitch about it. And I was like, butt hurt. And I'm thinking, this ain't fair and all of this classic loser bullshit, right? And we all go through it. And so, uh, you know, there was. I, I texted Austin the video of the winner and I had all this stuff in text that I backed out. Like I wanted to say stuff and I didn't say stuff and all of this. And so I, as I always do with a lot of stuff that is like pulling all my emotions as I sleep on it. And I woke up the next morning and I'm like, I was being a little bitch yesterday. Like this is fucking stupid. And so, uh, ultimately the guy that won deserves to win. Like he's an amazing speaker. I actually got to watch him speak on stage. Uh, so I can't hang up on the fact of like maybe how we won or anything else. Right. But, uh, he deserved to win. He did what it takes to win and whatever the Avenue was that got him to where he was like more power to him. Right. So, you know, when you lose anything, it's easy to go like accuse people of cheating. It's easy to think that they must have gotten there through unethical means. It's easy to think that there may be favoritism or some other bullshit going on. But ultimately, you got outplayed. You got burned, right? Somebody did better than you, and you lost. And there, it just, sometimes <clears throat> it takes a couple hours to come around to that, right? Like it was their turn to pop, right? Yeah. Like it just wasn't your time. Right. Right. right? And... and, and, and like we didn't write those to be back to back, but no, that's no, no. really what it is. Yeah. I mean, it, self lo self loathing and self doubt. Like that's an easy way for people to cope with. It's not failure, but it feels like failure. Oh, it's failure. And so no, it's not. Well, I mean, the, the, it's not in this in this case. It's not failure. You didn't fail. It's not ultimate failure. No, but it's, I failed to win. You failed to win this one. Yeah. But you aren't a failure because of it. Right. But it makes you feel like a failure. And self-loathing and self-doubt and blaming others is just a natural way for people to cope with how they're feeling about those types of situations. Yeah. Like, but you had, 
like what you would say is an enlightenment moment, right? Like you had self-recognition of, wait a second, I'm being a punk about it. I can't, this isn't how I live my life. This isn't how I tell my employees to be. Right. This isn't how I raise my kids. Right. Why am I being this way? And that's really the greatest account of, you know, self-growth is oh, totally. to be able to look in the mirror and say, okay, I'm, I recognize it. I'm better than that. I'm going to move on. And from now on, I'm not going to do that. Right. You know what I mean? And you just have to, I mean, we all do it, mm. right? We literally all do it. Like yeah. I do. I don't. I can't think of a specific example right this second, but I mean, I do it. Like well, it's it's what drives little league sports parents to like get in fights with the umpires, mm-hmm. right? Oh, because they don't realize that their kid. Well, like your kids are let me losing. Think about that for a second. <clears throat> your kids are losing, and there's nothing you, you can do about. There's it. nothing you can do about it, and you have a hard time owning. Yeah. Up to losing. And so now you start blaming it on the umps or blaming it on the refs. Yeah. And then you're so blaming it on them that now you're like vocal about it. Yeah. And you get kicked out of the ball fields or whatever because you told a ref to fuck off or, (laughs) you know, what? like this shit happens. Mm -hmm. Danny, my wife, she got kicked out of the ball fields for cussing at a ref. First off, so we're going to give a little insight here. Um, your wife's bat crap crazy <laughs> and no one that knows her is surprised by that at all. Yeah. Like she, now. she, her emotions are on her. She's a lot like me. Like uh, the emotions are on the sleeve and nothing's being held back, bitch. For clarity. Here it comes. For clarity. There was another mom that was go, like going psycho on the refs and Danielle was like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> We're not having that. And so Danielle kind of went psycho on the other mom. And then somebody tried to like step in. Oh shit! And Danielle was like, "No, this bitch over here needs to learn a lesson." Well, <laughs> the person that that was trying to step in happened to be the league commissioner. Oh shit! And she didn't know that, so he was like, "You get to watch from the other side of the you fence." Get, yeah, you get to <laughs> sit in your car. I've only ever yelled at a ref one time, and it was because literally, so it was one of my daughter's soccer games. The other team and both teams were doing it really they were fouling each other so hard like kids were gonna get hurt yeah and i was like uh, like i walked out to the line and i said that exact same thing i said if you don't start calling this stuff these kids are gonna get hurt yeah on both sides i mean i I said on both sides i said we got you got to do something before it gets too rough and then she did start you know making the calls but i wasn't like a yeah jerk about it i was just literally the kids were like this was probably three years ago. I mean, they're little. I'm like, yep. these, there's going to be broken legs, yeah. broken arms. I mean, like, we got to you know, do teeth. something. It's, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a fist fight out in the baseball. Baseball's the worst, too, because the game's so slow, and it's in the summer, and it's hot, yep. and people are mad already, and they don't serve beer at most of those. You know what I mean? Yeah. So people are just on edge anyway. Yep. They're the worst. There's, like, a little bit of insecurity I play, too, when it comes to, like, making videos for contests and like it it, is for me like sometimes like if you know you made something good your first reaction isn't to go oh do you like it like for me i feel like like when it comes to like making videos on my end it's i know a video is a good whenever i can watch it like several times and like i don't care for plumbing but like whenever i know i'm watching a plumbing video like our latest one i'm like that's kind of how it's just about kind of being honest with yourself and it's almost like insecure people will, they'll be like, well, I don't know if I like it, but if someone says I like it, then I'll like it. Well, and, and a lot of times too, we trick ourselves into thinking that there's actually like rules to this shit. Mm-hmm. And, and so we trick ourselves into thinking there's rules and then we abide by the rules that we made up in our head that we think are there. Mm-hmm. And they're not even there, right? Mm-hmm. So like, um, you know, a prime example of it. In that video, I offered a pair of tickets to whoever shares the video, Mm -hmm. right? If they are inspired by this and they want to go to MDM, Mm -hmm. I'll buy your, I'll buy two tickets for you. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not like a random drawing. Like I'm going to pick the person Mm -hmm. that I feel would benefit the most from going to MDM. I messaged him today. I'm going to see if he replies. He might be too busy to go, Mm -hmm. but like, it's, it's like, it's not some random thing. Right. So some people may have shared that video thinking it's a random thing. And it might not be. And so, like, I was submitting that video thinking, oh, if I get the most views, then I'm a shoe in 
Mm-hmm. No, it had, it had nothing to do with views. It's whoever. It's all about who you know, baby. It, well, it, it's not about <laughs> even who you know. It's the guy Sometimes. putting on the show, whoever he feels is going to be the best on there, right? And he got to watch this guy on stage for an hour, and he was fucking good. Like he deserves yeah. to be on there, yeah. totally. So, and sometimes you can kind of get. It's not a saying that our video wasn't good, but sometimes you can make something and you're like, this is the best. Then you realize that like thousands of other people have made videos just as good as that. You know, it's yeah. like you kind of have that realization where you're like, you have that moment where you're like, man, I'm really, I'm stepping up. And then you go on YouTube or whatever and you're like, dude, like. <laughs> we got know? rolled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It happens. Yep. What time? Are we what else you want to talk about? So, uh, oh, funny story. Sorry. Funny story real quick. Um, sorry. Is that better? There we go. Now I can I see the clock. You actually started your clock on time today. Yeah, I didn't drink as many beers as I usually do before oh, I man. came over. <laughs> yeah. I'm on. kidding. I don't know. I just remembered. You just remembered. He's like, I just to make some tea? Like, you know, you know <laughs> shine your shoes for you while I'm here? What's he fucking talking about? I don't know. <laughs> well, he's like, I'm on a roll. He's like, if I don't else get, you want me to do? If I don't get a button like where I can just shut his <laughs> mic off, I'm quitting. A, a mute button? <laughs> like, I'm just going to just like... You need a cough switch. You can just leave it off. Or do a switch where it's like, I think I'm talking, but but I'm not really. And like, oh, what do you have to say, Austin? I'm just like talking away. It's in your audio, but it's never recording. Yeah. Oh, God. So, I... My mind just went blank. I had a hilarious story about baseball, and now I can't remember it. That's Damn. okay. It'll come back to I you. I got to write it down sometimes. If you remember. All right, topic three. Hey, if you like what you're hearing on The Void and you want even more info, we just started a mentorship program specifically for trades professionals to start their business or to get their business to an incredibly healthy position. So if you'd like more info, click on the link in the description of this show. Uh, how many days do you have left? So, Hey, wait, quick newsflash. We're all going to die. Totally. Don't panic. A hundred percent. It's okay. Like if you're a male, you're probably going to die around 78 to 80. If you're a female, you're probably going to die around 80 to 82. Those are just stats. I'm going to make it to a hundred. If you're one of them guys that's chugging four monsters a day, you need to shave about 10 years off that shit. (laughs) Let's just be honest. (laughs) It is what it is. Oh, right? My friend Travis used to say, there's uh, more old drunks than there are old doctors. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> but This is true. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know if that means drink more beer and don't be healthy. I just, I don't, I don't know exactly what that means. He used to say it all the time. So where this comes from is uh, I live with intentionality. Um, I'd love to have more intentionality. But... Um, Like every day I check our numbers at work. I check how many calls we ran. I check how much money we made. I check how many dollars per call we made. Um, Every month I'm checking our costs in the company to make sure we don't have any anomalies. And, you know, all of these things. I'm very intentional with all of that stuff. Now, don't confuse intentional with successful. I would love for these numbers to be better. I would love to run more calls. I would love to have more money. I would love to be more profitable. Um, 40 minute phone call with my financial strategist. And he's like, you need to be more profitable. So like, I I know we'll talk about that after the show. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, you know, I, I live with intentionality because what gets measured improves and, uh, to, to start, anything with intentionality, you have to understand the metrics. You have to know where you're at, right? If you want to read a book, if you want to become a reader, you can't just start randomly reading at any time in a random number of pages. You need to put some kind of metric to it. You need to commit to reading 10 pages a day or something like that, right? Um, If you want to lose weight, it's going to be real hard to lose weight without a scale. Right, you need to be intentional with how you're going to lose weight, and you need to be intentional with tracking your weight loss. And if you wake up tomorrow and you're up a pound, you need to look back and see what I did. Right? Uh, in 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 like intentionality is the beginning of all of that stuff. Well, if you run down the intentionality line long enough, you start to realize that like we only have so much time left on this earth. And we only have so much time to achieve what we want to achieve. And so like at my age, 
there's a realistic possibility that I only have like 10 summers left with my parents. There's a realistic possibility that I've only got like, I don't know, 40 summers left with my wife. Right? So do I want to let any of those go to waste? I don't know. You know, by the time my kids like grow up and get out of the house and everything else, I've only got like four and six summers left with them. That's a scary thought, isn't it? That's fucking scary. Right? So, um, I mean, especially when you think about like, like when we grew up, like at 18, we were out. It was like, see ya. Yeah. You know, it's not that you like wanted to leave, but it was like, spread the wings. Yeah. I'm out, dog. Yeah. Like, I love you. I'll see you on the weekend. Send me some money. You know, I like it. Like, I'm out of here. And so, I I mean, I see where you're going. I I don't want to generalize it like that. I completely understand. Like, you have to live with intention with everything. You know, I shouldn't say that. If you don't live with intention with everything, you're going to miss goals and big dates. And you're going to, you know, just piss away time that you don't realize is going to be very important to you when you get older. Yeah. Yeah. The, what I'm, I, I, I haven't committed to this yet. I'm trying to grasp my, you've basically thrown me a wrench. I'm trying to grasp yeah. my thoughts on this. What I'm thinking about <clears throat> doing is I'm thinking about counting the days I have left to 80 years old. And I want to put those in the form of marbles and put them in a fish tank. Oh, that'd be sad. And every day I'm going to pull a marble out of the fish tank. That's a, first off, it's it's gonna be a big fish tank. It's three hundred sixty five days in a year. It's like the Bass Pro fish tank. Like that's you don't have, like well, you could pull one out a year. I'm just like over, you could try to do that. I'm just over forty three or forty one. Let me let me see here. So I got what thirty nine thirty nine times three sixty five thirty nine times three sixty. Oops. How's 65? Mitch making more money than so, me right now? Fourteen thousand two hundred and thirty five marbles. That's not that many marbles. That's a lot of marbles. If you get hit by a bus, can Dave and I go to your house and just like bust the fish tank open? Hey, look up a square area of X amount of marbles. I guarantee it. Google will bring something up. I bet it's like a forty or fifty gallon tank. It's it, it's it's gonna be big. Look, now you got me curious. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to get off on something here, but I will say that. I'm going to just play devil's advocate for a minute. Like if you live your life, like, okay, I'm one day less. Like you can't, it's hard to live. It can be hard to live free doing that also. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's hard to be a free spirit when you're like, up one less fucking day on the, on the earth. By, By the way, what was it? How many marbles fit in a one gallon jar? It's 500 marbles. Okay, so, so your number divided by 500 is how many gallon fish tank? Right. So 14,000 divided by 500, we're only a 28-gallon tank. Oh, shit. A 30-gallon fish tank would hold enough marbles to I'm symbolize not, I, I'm gonna, my life. Is that encouraging? or like? No, it's <laughs> fucking sad as shit. I'm not getting a tank yeah. and putting marbles in it, and then every day, I'm, like, what's the big reveal? Does it count down? It's the last one. Ten. Not well, you know anything you, after like that, at midnight every, and you just stay out and throw it away. Every day with an like, empty oh, tank is fuck, a bonus. I'm, I'm fucking dead. Every day with an empty tank is a bonus. Every but, day you're alive is a bonus. True, true. 100%. Like you know what I mean. But like the top, like the idea for this is this topic's going sideways. I can feel it. No, 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 no. <laughs> like it's going right where it needs to. Like the idea for this is like we ain't gonna be here forever. It's to and, be aware, and we like to think that we have tons of time left on this earth. Whether you're 20, whether you're 40, or whether you're 60. Yeah, I and, will. And you don't. And and yes, there are situations where it could be gone tomorrow, right? Like you could, I don't want to be morbid. But I could come over to the house and kill Mitch tonight in his sleep. You could do that, or you could like die in a car crash on your way home. I don't know. That truck's pretty heavy. But yeah, I could. <laughs> I mean, yes, I could. And you could. And which is why they say live every day to the fullest, right? But what we're, what really kind of the tie is with, business is people always start too late. Yes. You know what I mean? They always say five years from now, I'm going to start six years from now. I'm going to start when you were, when you were 20, you should have started saving for retirement, but you didn't. Right. Okay. Now you're 35 and you're thinking about starting your business and you still haven't started saving for retirement. 
Well, you better start that fucking business and get it going. That gives you 15 years to 50. It gives you 20 years to 55 to make that son of a bitch roll so that you can retire. You know what I mean? Because literally you're going to blink and you're going to be 65 and you're going to have no money. Right. That's what's going to happen. Like the, the greatest thing I've ever done that as far as finances go, and I've said this on the show before was we started saving for retirement early. Mm -hmm. Like that was the, the best thing. Uh, we learned that in high school. Yep. We whatever the name of that class is. I know I've said this exact same thing on the show. Senior seminar. Senior I seminar. Yeah, yep. you're 100 percent right. And they showed me the 401k growth curve, and I was like, Oh my god, I got to start like immediately. <laughs> so when we got married, I was like, I'm 16. Yeah, we're <laughs> throwing every dollar we had in it, you know. Mm-hmm. But for those that haven't, if you're on the fence and you're thinking about starting your company and you haven't started saving for retirement, now is the time. Right. Either get after it. Or just accept the fact that you may be broke forever. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, if you're not saving and you're not willing to do that, just, I mean, it's time to either shit or get off the pot. Yeah, and that's ultimately what leads to, like, mediocrity. You you end up with people that get behind the curve or run a little late or whatever, and then they start throwing in the towel, they start giving up, and then they start, you know, settling. Yeah. And, and living with intentionality is anything but settling, right? You no, know, you're humping it every chance you get because every you, chance you, get. you realize that I have to be moving forward. Yeah. Because I've been dragging my feet for too long. Right. Right. It's it's about doing what it takes to get where you want to be. So, you know, I didn't start investing for retirement at, at the age I should. And so I'm in the position where my company is like I have some retirement, don't get me wrong. But, no, but your but goal is near where it is, or where but, it should be. But your goal is the company is gonna the, get big enough where I can either sell it or start stacking cash here in a couple of years, exactly, and have that retirement. Yeah, the company is my retirement in one form or another. But every day, the way you deal with that is be intentional yes. with the growth of the business. Yeah, and and that transfers to all aspects of life. It transfers to raising kids. It ra- transfers to having a happy marriage. It transfers to having a nice green yard. It, it transfers yep. to literally everything. Yeah. And if you don't do that, you're just a slug. Yep. You know, I mean, you just, that's just, it's a hard truth. You're just, you're just cruising through life and you're not, you know, you're just cruising for a bruising. You're just not, <laughs> I mean, sorry. you want to be, God damn it. Awesome. You want to <laughs> be great or not. Right, basically is what it is. And if you just want to sit around and smoke dope all day and be in the socialism system, then enjoy it. it you're not gonna don't bitch when you're old and broke and in a right home. Yeah, the like I have no no shortage of access to people that were like literally down to their last dollar, literally on their last leg at their last resort, last ditch effort. You know, felons you know, all this stuff that have now in, in a, in a few short years, we're talking like five years, they went from like divorced felon and thousands of dollars in debt to now happily married, clean record and millionaires. Yeah. And the difference between them and everybody else is the level of intentionality that they live with. Yeah. And they didn't just say, Oh, well, it's too late for me. Right. Right. Like, oh, I can't do it. They no, found they a were purpose. like, we have to, I have to do it. And it's up to me. It's 100% up to you every time. Yeah. Like, you want to do it or not. Yeah. They, they found a purpose. They built a business around that purpose. And they woke up every day with intentionality to fulfill that purpose every day. And, and every day includes Saturday and Sunday, too. It's not like they woke up on Monday and felt inspired. And then Thursday, they were like, hey, let's cruise on into the weekend. Like, they were putting in their work every day. Yeah. Every single day. It's like the Jordan Peterson thing. Like, life is hard, but there's a lot of things you could do to make it a lot worse. Like, you know, you can say, like, oh, I'm a felon, I'm this, I'm in debt, or whatever. It's just like, yeah, it's like, you know, it, it might take some time to get out of that, but you could do nothing and make your, you know, make your situation a lot worse. Right. Right. And and that's one of the, one of the biggest pandemics in America right now is the middle age or not middle age, uh, middle income earner, right? Uh, the reason why is because you're comfortable and it's really, really difficult to leave that comfort zone 
to go fulfill your dreams. And so you get a guy who's making 80 to 100 grand a year working for somebody else, and he's got good benefits and he's got good retirement and he's comfortable. He ain't going to leave, right? Well, that's that's welfare, right? Like that's the biggest pandemic I mean, in the country. It's is, it's like rich welfare is really what it is. Yeah, it's because, the exact same thing. Yeah, it's I mean, it's like you're getting welfare and it's just enough where you don't have to work, but your ends are met, but you're not living in a nice house, but you don't have to work. Right. And if I go to work uh, and I don't get a great job, I'm going to be in the same spot. Eh, it's just easier for me to be comfortable and stay right here. I, d- I don't want to, you know, if I get a decent job and I'm making a little bit more money and then I lose that job and then I don't have the welfare, then I don't have anything. Right. So it keeps you comfortable. It's a cycle. It, it is a cycle. It's a bullshit cycle is what and, it is. And that's why... Uh, the high achieving person puts themselves in uncomfortable situations every day because they need to get used to being uncomfortable. They need to get comfortable being uncomfortable. They need to, they need to be very okay putting themselves in a situation where they may not know how to get out of it until they're in it. And then it's just a matter of solving problems until you get out of it. Right. One of my, one of my favorite movies out there is the Martian. And I know it's a fiction movie. Yeah, that's a good. Is that Matt Damon? He's on the. Yep. He's on Mars. He's on Mars. That's a good movie. So I love it because he keeps a positive attitude in the face of like sure death. Right. He's, he's also taken Vicodin. Well, <laughs> that helps. Not not until later in the movie. No, it's in the beginning. He's, he's sprinkling them on his potatoes yeah. for dinner and just. <laughs> so I'd have done the same shit. Um, I'd have figured out how to make moonshine first. But. Ultimately, he's figured out how to stay positive and to keep solving problems. And in the end of the movie, he summarizes it perfectly. That when you're out there against all odds and you solve enough problems, eventually you solve enough problems that you get to, go, get to come home. Right? It's just one problem after another. It's one problem at a time. What, yeah. we, what we talk about on the Trade Wins coaching call last night. How, uh, do, you, Zach? how do you eat an elephant? One bite at one a time. One bite at a time. <laughs> right? David had never heard. I la- that. I'd never heard that. David I laughed. Had never heard I had laughed so hard. Yeah. I mean. So like it was mostly you having dad jokes, but right. So like this <laughs> this big giant fucking water line we're doing. I mean, it's five thousand two hundred feet of pipe that we're putting in. I don't want to hear it. I just put in half a mile of eight inch water main. Okay. With two fucking guys. <laughs> so well, that's all we got. Two guys. <laughs> and David's short, so he has to try. Extra and and David did it in forty seven minutes too. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was a week. It was a week and a half. <laughs> but, you know, 5,200 feet of pipe. How do you put that much pipe in? One foot at a time. One bucket scoop at a time, right? And instead, like, the, the creek crossing was the hardest part of this job, right? So what did I do? I hit it fucking head on. Like, we're going to be on this job for two and a half weeks. But what did I do with the creek crossing? Day two, bitch. Like, like... The first half of the day was kind of getting our bearings on what we're going to do where, where we're going to put material and everything else. We didn't even fire up the excavator until noon on day one. So the first half of the day was like digging towards the creek. Like literally day two starts with, let's put a backhoe in a creek. Mm -hmm. Like let's literally do the worst part about this job right from the fucking get-go. You need me at your your crew. (laughs) Yeah, Come on by. (laughs) It'd take half the time. I got a goon spoon that needs a warm handle. (laughs) I (laughs) That sounds very... <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I... <laughs> but but you, you jump in and you do the worst part right off the get-go. Like, mm-hmm. like, what's the worst that can happen? Well, we get a fucking backhoe stuck in a creek and I have to call in a wrecker, right? I got lucky and they didn't have to call in like an articulating boom wrecker. I was able to just get a normal tow truck and give me a little bit of assistance, right? They didn't just... have to have a crane out and pick it up and then just yeah. drag it over <laughs> to the next spot. Right. It's not like I had to call in the diesel brothers and have them do a recovery video of my backhoe. What's the diesel brothers? Oh man. You've never watched YouTube. I mean, he, he's oh, just shit. getting on Facebook. I mean, we're, we're yeah, there. yeah. I watch YouTube. We're look up, out of the ocean. look up the diesel brothers. You'll enjoy it. Okay. So, uh, but you know, I got like, I knew going into this Creek that there's a good chance this thing's not going to get itself out. And I'm probably going to need a little bit of a tug from something. <laughs> Fuck it. Like we got it. You got to get your, Get your minds out of the gutter, man. I only laughed because Austin laughed. I don't know. I don't, I, Austin, <laughs> it was most likely a lesbian tow truck driver that showed up. There was no tugging going on of any kind. 
Oh Look, my he's, god! He's gonna dude. have an ab cramp. He's laughing so hard. Oh shit! It's because he eats all that junk food. <laughs> oh, so like man. we we literally started the job, hogged a whole bunch of footage yesterday, and started right into the worst part of it today, and and it's. One bite at a time, one scoop at a time. Like, let's just get into the thick of it. Let's put ourselves in the most uncomfortable part of this job right from the get-go. Can't get any worse after this. Like, literally, day two, and it's all downhill from here. Yeah, day so, three, you're rolling. Right. So, anyways, living with that much intentionality, Yeah. getting this job done on, like, you wouldn't want to be ahead of schedule and then be, like, fearful of the last, like, worst part of this job. So, you know, we we approach this job with intentionality and now we're now we're on to the easy part now it's just digging a three-foot trench for a couple thousand feet two days you should be done two days yeah two days <laughs> two days two days, <laughs> two days. It, it, if you had a case it'd be faster what's, Them what's cats funny are slow what's funny is the uh, uh the top foot is some of the heaviest uh, thickest like gumbo mud ever oh what's well, because it's been raining and then the next two feet down is all shale that's weird. It is weird. Where is it at? In Oak Grove. It's right across the street from the old Bent Oak Golf Club. Oh, yeah. It's rocky as shit over there. Yeah. So, I think... That's it, man. That about wraps it up for the show. I yeah. thought, man, I still can't think... I had something fucking hilarious. Oh! There it is. It came, it, it came to me. Oh, so, God. This okay. Is, this is fucking funny. It better be good, because you've built it up for 30 minutes. Oh, no, minutes. it's fucking hilarious. So, uh, my wife has gotten into this habit of sending me nudes whenever I go out of town, and she knows I'm in a conference with a lot of people. Okay? Stop. So Stop. Stop. What? She sends them to you when she knows you're in a conference with a lot of people. Yeah. Why? Because she wants me to be fucking embarrassed if I open it up and there's or people around me. she wants a bunch of people looking at her naked. Hey, she doesn't know any of those people. Doesn't matter. It doesn't. That's not the point. <laughs> the point is she knowingly sends them to you knowing you're going to open it, yeah. And there's a bunch of dudes around. Well, this trip, <laughs> this trip, I got her ass back. She, oh, God. She's a chaperone at the School of Economics. You, you she's can't running be, the loan office you, at the you, School of Economics, you can't right? Be sending dick pics. So I sent her a dick pic. Standing in the hotel mirror, I'm like, <laughs> boom, there you go. Have fun with that one, right? <laughs> so, what is the matter with you? No, 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 no. <laughs> It comes back to bite me we in the were, ass. We were almost done with the podcast. And then... <laughs> so okay. here we go. It's okay. 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 The day two of this event, they're like filming something for TV and everybody that could be on camera needed to scan this QR code and sign a release. Uh-oh. No fucking deal. Right? Like, I, I don't care. Well, part of the release was so they could navigate the release or match the release to the people was it wanted to get into your gallery oh, shit. and put a picture <laughs> to your release? <laughs> and I've seen that. Come, come to find out, my cell phone reception was the cause of this, but I'm trying to get a picture to link up. Like, I'm trying to tap on the thing, and it's just not working, and it was a cell phone reception issue. So the girl that's, like, in charge of getting all the releases signed, she comes over to help me through it. Oh, shit. And she gets it to pop up, and it goes straight to my fucking gallery. <laughs> and the first picture was the one I took that morning, and she got the full money. <laughs> and I'm like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> Did she just look at you with disappointment? No. Like, that's pretty small. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, no. There was totally some fluffing going on before that picture. It was, it was totally fluffed. But I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Like, the one time I'm trying to get my wife back, and it still burns my ass. Mm, you, like know what, you know what we call that at my house now? A Mitch story? Yeah. That's a Mitch story. Mm. Yeah. Like, of course. You have a. Th- yeah. you have well, it's a, deleted now. It's not even on my phone. Anymore. Oh, that's man. like some. What did, <laughs> what did she say? What did she say? Oh, she just, like, she's. She had to look at it long enough to kind of like realize what it was. And then and I'm like, like, I didn't, I was looking away for a second. Like I didn't realize, like I looked away and I looked back and it's on my screen. Oh shit. And, I'm, and she's looking at my screen and I'm like, swipe. I'm like, oh, that's not a good one. She's like, I've seen them before. <laughs> okay. Only to you. Yeah. Only 
to Mitch Smedley. Yeah. Hey, rule for everyone out there. If you send nudes, send them and delete them off your phone. Yeah, delete it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's, I know, I know now. Oh my God. Or, or, poor or just be ready to not care if somebody else sees uh, it, I guess. Poor Mitch. Not poor me. Poor there Mitch. There was fluffing going on. I looked that's good in that photo. That's there was sarcasm. Fluffing. Poor Mitch. Poor Mitch. Poor Mitch. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God, dude. So my wife got a second kick out of it after hearing that. And then she told my kids about it. And of course, my kids are like, oh my gosh. First somebody, off, somebody else saw dad naked. First off, does that mean you guys are getting divorced? Your wife shouldn't be telling your boys. <laughs> oh, we don't keep anything from the boys. Yeah. And I don't think your parents kept a lot from you guys. And how'd yeah. that turn out? Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Oh, I know. I see it. <laughs> I see it. I see it daily. <laughs> yeah. so. Oh, my God. All right. So we had to leave you guys with a little bit of a joke. So um, <sighs> Wrap it up, Mitch. On, I've had enough. <laughs> on that note, we're out of here. Be careful with your nudes that you're sending to your significant others. <laughs> so, And don't be afraid to get a backhoe stuck in a creek. So, oh, man. Until next time, guys, we will see you later. I'll see you. Peace. Peace.